uh, well, while we are getting started with this, um, just like most of you, I was also faced with this question as how should I start Fake Uchop? And, uh, and so with this question, I approached uh, Dr. David Chang. I had the opportunity to ask him, sir, how should I start chopping? And his answer was very simple. He said, just do it. So this talk is uh, dedicated to Dr. David Chang, who kind of convinced, also taught, and practiced fake chop, confirming and transforming a lot of surgeons in the United States and also in India into this very elegant and very effective modality. So I'll be talking on executing fake chop. I have no financial interest in any of the instruments, machines, or techniques mentioned in this talk. And we'll approach this in these following headings. How to get started, how to get the machine ready for fake chop, some of the very basic types of chop, the horizontal, the vertical, the oblique. There are about 55 varieties of chop since its initiation, and each author has his own variation. But these are some of the most basic chops which will be useful to you when you get started on your course to transforming to chop. Also, I'll conclude with some of the most common mistakes that we all do while we are starting off trying and attempting fake chop. So, getting started that's the most important thing. Your machine. Understand your machine. It's not just about power, it's about hold. It's not just about the highest vacuum that the machine can offer, but rather the adequate vacuum that you require for the procedure itself. You will realize as you play around with the vacuum settings, the machine comes in with a default setting of high vacuum, about 400 millimeters of mercury in a peristaltic machine, but you actually need something like even 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury is more than enough for a medium grade cataract for chopping it. Of course, for quadrant removal, you can progress on to higher vacuum levels. So adequate vacuum for good nuclear hold is the most basic thing you have to understand and achieving it is practically half the battle won. What kind of FACO energy modality do you need? Some kind of interrupted modality. As you know, a continuous FACO mode would repel the nucleus just as much as it would attract it. So you need an interrupted modality of FACO, like a pulse or a burst mode, which delivers energy enough to impale the FACO probe, but does not keep pushing it away. It gives a break so that the nucleus can hold on to it. So I personally prefer the burst mode, which gives you just enough bursts of energy for the probe to impale the nucleus and just rest there while you come back to foot position two and hold the nucleus. Do not flinch on using a chopper. A blunt chopper or a sharp chopper are two very useful tools and especially when we are starting off with FACO, we start off with a very short or blunt instrument like a Sinsky IOL dialer, a Sinsky hook, and then when we see the size of the chopper, we are intimidated by it. Use the chopper to your advantage. So this is a micro finger. It has a cutting edge on the posterior surface. The tip is blunt. I have a pointer. Yeah. So the tip is blunt. Okay, use this. The tip is blunt here and so it will not damage the PC but it has a cutting edge on the back which enables you to cut through the substance of the nucleus. On contrast, you have a sharp tip chopper. The tip is sharp, the rest is blunt. So it cuts right through the core of the nucleus. Now, this cannot be overemphasized. In a chop, a good hold is all that matters. This is why this picture is put up. You can see that even if you have the sharpest saw to cut through the wood piece, it is the strongest hold on the other hand which gives you the good chop through. So how do you achieve a good hold? One, adequate depth of the FACO probe in the nuclear core. Impale the nucleus. The nucleus uh, is, or rather the FACO probe is right into the substance of the nucleus for it to give it a good hold not superficial, not the upper one-third, not the bottom one-third, right into the middle one-third. 
adequate build up and maintenance of vacuum is very important we all know that when occlusion is achieved we hear the bell on the feco machine in most machines most of us are scared of the bell we let go when we hear the bell don't be scared of the bell when you listen to the bell stay there that means your occlusion is achieved and also maintain the occlusion as you are executing the job maintain foot position too a uh, huge tendency that we have is either to keep pressing into foot pedal 3 that fego starts repelling the nucleus or you come back to foot pedal 1 where you are out of the vacuum and back into irrigation as the nuclear hold is gone i will demonstrate all these with help of videos but these are some of the three basic things that you should get started on when you are talking about a good hold so the first kind of chop that we are going to deal with is the horizontal chop the horizontal chop is called so because the movement plane of the instruments is in the horizontal plane so you one you have the feco probe and two you have the chopper so the chopper and the feco probe move in opposite directions towards each other trying to sandwich the nuclei in between uh, the feco probe and the chopper so one chopper that i would suggest is to use the blunt tipped sharp posterior edge chopper this is the micro finger <coughs> three dimensionally across section you can see the depth at which this feco probe is impaled into the nucleus the other important thing which has to be mastered and actually felt is maneuvering this blunt chopper around the equator of the nucleus so you have to go under the rexus margin so this is the rexus margin this is the tip of your horizontal chopper this is turned so that you get under the rexus margin go all the way around the equator and actually hook it around it so your blunt chopper is around the equator that is when your horizontal chop is effective and complete so now the feco probe and the chopper have sandwiched the nuclei and are good enough to divide it into two and the proof of the pudding is obviously in the eating i'll show you a video for that effect so clear the epinucleus impale the feco probe as proximal as possible so that you have enough distance for the chopper to move the chopper moves all the way around the equator and comes close to the probe and there you go so this is executing the first chop which is always the most important crack when you have cracked the entire nuclei into two hemi nuclei and the first chop is so effective that the second cracking or completing the hemi nucleus crack is just a manual displacement once you have chopped it into two hemi nuclei you can start breaking it into further uh, smaller pieces to execute this always have the plane of the hemi nucleus in a tangent towards the feco probe and start cleaving it towards the left side or rather the non dominant side of your piece itself so good occlusion again cannot be reemphasized over emphasized sorry and executing it as a chop again as this piece becomes free you can emulsify it also note i'll play this video again also note that we are trying to remove the nucleus from the tip upwards as this piece becomes free now this is when you need more vacuum like 200 or 300 mm of mercury and see that the tip is being chopped up first because when you are cracking these you have these sharp pi tips which are facing the posterior capsule and in moderate grade nucleus you are still lucky but as you go harder and harder on the nuclei these sharp tips are potentially dreadful enough to puncture the pc and fall right through always get the tip up and then emulsify so where can you use horizontal chop effectively wherever would be the answer but to start with what would be safer to try softer nuclei where you can see the entire nuclear uh, equator with hydro delineation with a large pupil and the rexus margin is adequately visible all around a deep anterior chamber where sometimes a vertical chop is a little difficult to execute so vertical chop again vertical because the plane of movement of the instruments is in the vertical plane you use a sharp chopper a sharp tip chopper 
movement of the chopper is upwards up downwards and the movement of the phaco probe is down upward and this is a simple uh, picture which shows you the amount of force that you have to use if your chopper is further away from the probe so if your chopper is a little further away then you need, need to use a lot more force to execute this job rather than when it is about a millimeter away from the probe this also a larger force also initiates a vector which turns to tends to rotate the nucleus around instead of executing the chop once you've started the chop and the crack emanates you cause a horizontal separation of the two chopped pieces so again vertical plane of movement of the instruments impale get into the depth of the nucleus probe and chopper close to the probe and there you go this is a vertical chop being executed rotate the piece complete the chop impale again close to the probe about a millimeter and there you go so where to use a vertical chop preferably in small pupils that is the advantage of a vertical chop because you have good visualization of the instruments that are you are using and both the instruments are completely within the pupillary plane so you have quite a safe margin you need a brittle or a hard nucleus softer nuclei are sometimes very slippery and when you try to use a sharp chopper on the surface of a soft nuclei you tend to dislodge it more than try to crack it so vertical chop in these cases would be good again as you start getting used to the kind of nuclei and the whole uh, idea of chopping you can realize that both these techniques are quite useful i was a vertical chopper to start with then i started learning horizontal chop just because i wanted to use it in softer nuclei now i can use both these chopping methods to my advantage across different types of cataract so the oblique chop is is a kind of a cross hybrid it combines both the benefit of the horizontal and the vertical chop in that uh, you don't go all the way round to the equator to engage the nucleus but instead so the oblique chop uses both the advantage of the horizontal and the vertical in that you don't have to go all the way round the equator to get the uh, hook the nucleus but just a little farther away close to the excess margin and down into the nuclear core to crack it so this is kind of oblique it's both horizontal and vertical this is executed quite effectively in cases where there are moderate grade nuclei the harder it becomes the more difficult it is to actually get in and you'll end up turning the nucleus instead of effectively getting a chop so these are three basic types of chop which are good to start with good and handy universally applicable in most common uh, situations that we face coming last to the mistakes that we perform when we all have attempted fake job but we have some kind of failures in the beginning some of the most common are inadequate hold you don't hold the nucleus well because of either inadequate nuclear purchase you had probe is not embedded into the nucleus deep enough these are some of the surgeons who operate at our institution we've just taken these videos to re-educate them on how to get back on and improve their job so you'll see that the phaco probe is trying to get into the substance of the nucleus but it is not deep enough though there's a trench the probe itself is not completely impaled in the substance of the nucleus <coughs> <coughs> the other thing is unsustained occlusion you'll keep seeing the occlusion uh, bar coming here over and over again the phaco probe is actually in the substance of the nucleus it is deep enough but the occlusion is not maintained because the surgeon keeps exiting into stage into foot pedal 1 so you'll see again occlusion is achieved occlusion is achieved again and a third time but it is not enough to hold on to the piece to execute a chop some of the other things phaco chop is a bimanual procedure and you need to get both hands and getting used to using both the hands inside the anterior chamber it is not like a divide and conquer where you can do it with one hand uh, chops so chop is about using the non dominant hand get used to it fear of the chopper obviously uh, using such a large instrument in the anterior chamber is initially intimidating but once you get used to it the chopper is a very effective instrument to effectively use phaco chop and again when you're using a chopper you're trying to make the superficial chops you see it's occluded well the probe and on but the phaco chopper itself is just scratching the surface instead of executing the chop it is neither horizontal nor vertical but just scratching the surface you ex execute only superficial scratches and not a chop 
this again is just to show you that even if you are a good chopper sometimes you will come across a case where a good chop is not executed because you are not in the adequate depth of the nucleus so this is a nuclear grade 4 and you need to be as deep as possible in this nuclear core to execute a chop so you see the FECO probe is completely embedded the chopper is good it is actually going through but you see the nucleus is rotating it is not executing a chop once more and the chop and you see the nucleus completely rotating instead of a chop being executed so what do you do turn it around you now have a crater in the middle you get deeper into the substance of the nuclear core take a good hold you can see then as the probe is being brought back the entire nucleus is actually moving along with the FACO probe. So you have kind of a lollipop around the FACO probe where you can hold the nuclear core and then execute this chop. So in summary, understand the machine, listen to it and respond to it. Be patient to get a good nuclear hold. FACO chop is not about a rush. If you get a good nuclear hold, your surgery will go on very smoothly and you will actually save up all the time that you generally take in a divide and conquer or a stop and chop also. Chop confidently. Don't try chop. Chop it. Chop it in the right plane. Complete the chop the first time and every time. Even if you have the first chop which has gone on well, if your second or third are not going through, then your chop is not going to be effective. So every time you chop, you should execute the same movement and achieve these chops in a regular manner. Of course, the bottom line is keep trying. Right? The best enemy of uh, change is success. If you are very good in divide and conquer, very good in stop and chop, you are most likely not initiated to learn a new technique. So the whole concept of learning a new technique because it is efficient is when you suffer failure. So befriend failure and keep trying and happy chopping. Thank you.